Hi, I'm Jeremy. Welcome to another episode of Livewire Review. Today is spring maintenance day. We're gonna do a brake service and we're gonna switch over to summer tires on the Tesla. Well, the Tesla's pretty low to the ground, so I'm gonna to have to put it up on some blocks just to get it up on the hoist. When you put this vehicle in park, the emergency brake comes on automatically. We can't do a brake service when the emergency brake is on, so we have to turn it off. So we go into the main menu, we go down to service, and you go to towing. You put your foot on the brake, just like it says on the screen, and you put it into transport mode. But before you do this, you better have the wheels chalked so that the car doesn't roll away on you. So this is the lifting point on the Teslas. As you can see, a regular hoist isn't going to fit on here. So what we do is we put a hockey puck in between here and the hoist arm. See, got to drive up on blocks of wood just to get this thing up in the air. That's because there's only about five and a half inches of ground clearance under here. Okay, we got all four corners set up on the hoist. We're ready to lift. Uses a 21 mil socket. Get our impact gun and take off these two tires. This one's stuck, so we'll leave one lug nut so we can hit it. The safest way to get a tire off is just to hit it on the back side. You only hit it on the rubber, make sure the lug nut's already tight. And it's just that easy. This prevents the wheel from falling off when you hit it. This one's also stuck, so we're just going to leave one lug nut on there so we can hit it off. And another one over here as well. So once again, we just come up to the back side of the tire, only hit the rubber, it comes right off. And same with back here, only hit the rubber on the tire. Go. Okay, we're gonna start off with the rear brakes and do a brake service. This is something you're gonna to wanna to do every spring or at least once a year, especially if you live in an area with a lot of salt. So first things first, we gotta get this e-brake connector off. There's a lot of sand in here. There's a two-step. There's a little red thing on top here that we have to take off. And then it helps to have a little screwdriver to flip up the clip and then the connector pops off. Like most cars, it uses a 14 mil wrench to get the back bolts off. Just need a small ratchet, loosen them up by hand. Okay, two caliper bolts are out. Then you just take the caliper and you rock a little bit towards you that way the piston goes slightly back in its bore and then you're able to slip it off the pads now I service this one in the fall so it should come apart fairly easy as you can see my brake pad just comes right out excellent shape and slip the inner pad out as well good shape and the sliders have to come out as well. So just keep in mind where the little rubber one is, and this one is in the top, so we're gonna keep it in the top. And the bottom one, we put a little bit of silicone lube in there. Okay, so the reason we use silicone lube is because there's rubber parts in here, and silicone will not affect the rubber. So you just need a little bit, otherwise it's gonna hydro lock in there. Take it, and you swirl it as you put it in, just to get the grease to spread around. And do the same thing with the top. Because if you don't use silicone lube, it can actually swell this rubber and then it gets stuck. Just take that, spin it as it goes in, make sure the lube goes all the way around, and then it's not hydro-locked. If it is, you get a little bit of the excess grease out. Okay, so for this next part, you're going to need some safety gear. You need something to keep dust out of your face, and you need something to keep the stuff out of your eyes as well. 
I switched over to a full face shield because I've had it actually go behind safety glasses and into my eyes. It's not a fun trip to the hospital, so take the extra precaution. So the idea is here is we take a little angle grinder and it has a 36 grit disc on it. And what we're trying to do is we're cleaning the rust off the edge of the pads where it's sliding in the sliders. So you look at your pads and wherever it sits in this holster and touches is where we have to remove some material. Now you don't need to remove a lot. It's got to look shiny like this when you're done. That way you know you've re removed enough material to put it back in. There you go, as you can see, shiny on all spots. And if it's your first time doing this, then we're gonna take it and we're test fit it first, make sure it actually moves. So I'm gonna put it here in the brakes. And you wanna take it with your hands and make sure that it moves by hand. That's the reason that we're doing this, is it has to be able to move. Take this back out. And we're gonna lube this up before we put it back in. Okay, now we're gonna do the other brake part. Shiny, looks good all around. Like I said before, if it's your first time, take the brake pad, stick it into the bottom part of the holster first where it springs in, push it in, make sure it moves by hand. If it moves by hand, you did a good job. Okay, one more thing you want to do for a brake service, you want to sand the pads just to get a little bit of the rough edges off. Take it on a flat workbench, just work it around so you remove some of the material and it looks like a new brake pad when you're done. And just do the same to the other one. Different directions and you want it to be on a flat surface working in different directions just so you remove a bit of the surface and it looks new again. Okay, so we got our sanded brake pads and now we're going to lube them up and put them back together. I like to use the purple lube from Permatex. I've put it on a car before and I've taken it apart three years later and the grease has still been there. So this stuff works really well. You don't need a lot, just enough that's on the sliding parts of the pad. Helps to prevent rust on the pad and uh, it lubricates it so it moves. Now the reason you have to do this every year on an EV is because the brakes are seldom used. Regenerative braking does most of the work. And for that reason, because the brakes don't move, they lock up a lot quicker. Okay, so on this one, this car has an electric parking brake. So we actually don't put any lube on here because the rear brake caliper senses how far the brake pad is pushed in. And so because it uses amperage on the motor, if you put any lubricant on the back of the pad, then it's going to slide so much easier and it's going to make it too tight on the rotor. A little bit more of our purple loop here. And just coat all the sliding areas of the pad. And before you put it back together, just check all your sides. Make sure you got lube on everything. And take it, put it back in the holster. Slide it up against the bottom first because that holds the pad in. And double check your work. Make sure that they move. That's really good. Sliders move. And we can now take the caliper and put it back on. Because we haven't changed the pads, we don't have to push the piston back. And the way this one goes on, you're going to slide it on in this direction first. Make sure you grab the pads because this motor is going to get in the way. And we have to just slide it up, move the slider out of the way here, and line it up. Bottom bolt is the easiest one to start with. So we'll just hand thread that one in. And we hand thread in the top bolt as well. Take our ratchet here, tighten it. Now you don't want to over tighten it. Fasteners are actually holding in place by using spring pressure in a way. When you take a fastener and you feel that slight stretch to the bolt, it means it's actually taking the bolt and stretching it out. And that is the pressure that holds the bolt on. And you'll feel it come to a stop and at that point don't go any further the stretch of the bolt will hold everything together and then we just take the connector for the parking brake and put it on clicks in and there's a little red clip in here that holds it down so make sure that's inserted all the way in. okay now that brake service is done Okay, so the front brakes are a little bit different design than the rear. This one uses a Brembo four piston caliper on it and they have something called a quick release brake pad. So this one's done a little different. 
we uh, take the pins here and you tap them through. As far as you can get them. Okay, now let's get another tool and knock those in. Okay, it looks like a small screwdriver will fit in there too. Since they're already moving, the screwdriver won't be hurt by hitting it. And we just keep going as far as you can. And there is a caliper clip on here, so if you hold the clip down, you should be able to slide the pins out. One by one. And the top one will fall out because now there's no pressure on the clip. See? And these clips, they slide through the pin like this. Okay, so now that the pins are out, the pads should slip upwards because they are of a quick release style. So that means we just grab them from the bottom here. They should be a little tight. That's why we're doing the service today. Now, if you can't get the pads out, it helps to push the pistons back just slightly. So we'll start with the outer pad here, and you just give a little bit of pressure to push the pistons back. That way you have room between the rotor and the pad in order to slip this out. And now that I have space, the pad slips out very easily. So the part we're going to be servicing today is the edge of these pads where they slide. Now to get the inner pad out, you do the same thing. Just give a little bit of pressure to push those pistons back. Hold the rotor in place and that pad should slide out. If this doesn't slide out, it really is in need of service. That's why we're removing a layer of metal here and here and putting a little bit of lubricant on. Same story as before, EVs don't use their brakes a lot, so this is why we have to service them once a year in a salty environment. So Tesla's summer wheels actually have a space cut out for a rotor screw. This rotor screw head actually sticks out a little bit. I have this taken out because the winter tires don't fit over this screw, but while we're at it, I'm going to put this screw back in to hold the rotor in place. I put a little bit of anti-seize on it so that it doesn't get stuck. So you'll find a lot of things brake related do get stuck. This is no exception. Now it's not going to hold the rotor perfectly straight, but it does help. Okay, we got our angle grinder set up and we have our safety gear on. So we're just going to clear some metal off the edges here. And just like the back brakes, we also sand the front pads just to get some of the contaminants. Okay, and just like the back pads, take a little bit of lube and put them on the edge of the pads. Just enough to cover the surface. And just so you're aware, the squealer actually goes on the bottom. Basically, you follow a rotor in the direction that it goes you put it to where the rotor's gonna hit the squealer first. And we just slide the pad back in there. You gotta line it up with where the pins are about to go in. And we'll do the other brake pad. Okay, we do the same thing. Just slide the pad in there up until the point where the pins go in. Now the pins get a little bit of silicone lube for the same reason as the back. It's where the pads slide on them. Now this might be a bit too much. Just make sure the whole pins are covered, but not the part that locks into the caliper, that little part in the back there. Okay, so the pins go in the back side. Make them just go through the back of the pad first, but don't push them all the way through. Okay, so now we're gonna put the clip on. The clip, it's easier if you just put it onto one, one of them first. So we take the clip and we're gonna push this through until it goes all the way into this side. And we can force it in. Use your hammer and you just pop the clip in. 
can see it's sticking out here. And then for the top one, hold the pad up with your fingers, push the clip down so that the second slider can go through it, because this one's a little bit tougher. Now it's lined up. And hit it through. Okay, before I go to put the summer tires on, because we get a lot of rust and corrosion here, what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of anti-seize just around the hub here, right in the middle. That way the wheel doesn't get stuck to the hub when we go to hammer it off. Okay, so now I'm ready to put the summer tire on. I've taken the right rear because we do a tire rotation when we're changing the tires over. Just put them on hand tight. Now when using an impact gun, I'd highly recommend a torque stick because then you won't over tighten the wheels before you torque them on the ground. Okay, we got these nice little T's that we can put on in the center. I like to line the T up with the TPMS sensor here. Just smack it in. Now these are Bluetooth TPMS sensors, so they will self-program when we get in the car. And we'll set the tire pressures before we move on to the next one. That's a fairly heavy car, so we set these to 42 PSI. Always take your gauge and put it over the reading and then let the air pressure out so that it stabilizes on its way down. And so we can rotate it, we're gonna put the right front wheel on the right rear. put these tires away we're just going to mark the right front right rear left front left rear and we're going to make a measurement of the tires just to see where they're at marking the tires helps you next season when you go to put them on so you can rotate them properly i'm going to continue the brake service on the other side but i just won't take the time to explain it because we've already seen it And now we set the torque to 129 foot-pounds. I know, it sounds like a lot, but electric cars have a lot of torque, and that's why the nuts are so tight. Okay, we'll try a battery test, but I don't think it's going to work because it looks like it is charging at the moment. No, it worked. 455 cool cranking amps. Looks like the battery's still good. Okay, that's today's episode of Livewire Review. If this was helpful at all, think about subscribing or maybe give us a like.